What's going on everyone, it's the Fake Weeb here, and today I'm going to be talking about just how far I think Season 2 of the anime will cover from the manga. With Season 1 covering 63 chapters in just 24 episodes, I wonder how many chapters we could see adapted for Season 2. Now I'm going to fully break this down and go episode by episode, and I do kind of expect to be wrong once the actual season comes out, but once Season 2 drops next year or in 2023, I think it would be a fun idea to come back to this video years later and see how much of my estimates were right and wrong. Now as always guys, before I start the video, I would kindly appreciate it if you can drop a like as that would help me out a ton, and consider subscribing to the channel for some more awesome Jujutsu Kaisen manga videos appearing in your sub feed. Feel free to join the Discord server as well if you would like to interact with others who also love Jujutsu Kaisen, and follow me on Instagram as I plan to post on there soon, but anyways, without wasting any more time, let's get back to the video. Alright, so starting with episode 1, I think it will cover chapters 64 and 65. The first season of the anime actually ended exactly on chapter 63, and so I think starting on chapter 64 is perfect because it shows our main trio having a light-hearted moment, and it's gonna be the only light-hearted moment we'll see for the rest of the season. So yeah, it's a pretty funny, goofy chapter in meeting Itadori's middle school friend. Then it jumps into the Gojo flashback arc and ends with Yaga informing the both of them about their escort mission of Riko Amane. Episode 2 will cover chapters 66, 67, and 68, where we meet Toji for the first time as he makes a deal with the star religious group. Meanwhile, our duo, Gojo and Geto, save Riko Amane from the Q assassination group. The episode will end when they hear about a bounty placed on Riko's head as Geto defeats one of the bounty hunters. Episode 3 will cover chapters 69, 70, and 71. This is when Gojo takes Rika from school and attacks one of the bounty hunters using the limitless technique. We also save Riko caretaker off screen and then they all chill at Okinawa, we see them chilling at the beach, we see them eating at a restaurant, and then I'm pretty sure they visit an aquarium as well. And uh, yeah, they return to Jujutsu High and that's when Gojo fights with Toji, and I can see this episode ending with a cliffhanger as Gojo lies bloody on the ground with Toji taking the victory. Episode 4 will cover chapters 72, 73, 74, and 75, 4 chapters which might seem like a lot, but these 4 chapters are pretty much a lot of action and less talking. The first two chapters are when Toji kills Riko and defeats Geto, and then the last two chapters are the rematch of Toji versus Gojo. Again, majority of the panels are action sequences, so I think they can fit it. Episode 5 will cover chapters 76, 77, 78, and 8 pages of 79, so less than 3.5 chapters. This is basically the wrap up to the Gojo past arc, and uh, we see Yuki talking to Geto and Geto leaving Jujutsu High. Some of these panels are pretty quick and filled with a little words, so I think they can fit this much, and uh, yeah, I think the episode will end when Gojo wakes up from dreaming of the past and sees his three students waiting for him. Now we move on to the Shibuya incident arc. So episode 6 will cover the remaining half of chapter 79, chapter 80, 81, and 82. These three and a half chapters are basically the whole Mechamaru fight with Mahito, and it's a fight, right? So it's a quick read, and most of the panels are actually just action and movements, not too many words, so I think the Mechamaru fight can be done in one episode, ending with the view of the Shibuya streets. Episode 7 will cover chapters 83, 84, and 85. Chapter 83 is when the Shibuya incident starts. We get a look at the four teams of Jujutsu Sorcerers waiting outside the curtain. It's the beginning of a crazy arc, right? So I'd assume that Mappa would want to capture the horror feeling of what's happening outside of Shibuya. You know, the people panicking outside and shouting, bring Satoru Gojo. And so I expect a lot of paneling or just slowed down moments to capture the true essence of the environment, but uh, yeah, it continues when Gojo arrives at the underground station and fights the three curse users there. It's pretty action-packed with Gojo fighting the three curse users, so I can see this episode ending when Gojo kills Hanami, smashing him into the wall. Episode 8 will cover chapters 86, 87, and 88. Now, these three chapters are pretty fast reads, and I wanted to add chapter 89 in here as well, but I couldn't for one specific reason, which I'll explain later, but yeah, chapter 86 and 87 was when Yuji fought the Grasshopper Curse, which, you know, it was a pretty quick fight. And I can see this episode ending with the horrific scene of transfigured humans coming out of a train and slaughtering the civilians. I think that could be like a pretty scary twist to head on to the next episode. Episode 9 will cover chapters 89, 90, and 91. These three chapters are basically the ceiling of Gojo, and that's why I didn't want to add chapter 89 in the last episode, because I feel like the whole ceiling process should all be in one episode. You know, if it wasn't two episodes, it would kind of break the 
element of surprise knowing that he's going to get sealed in the next episode. So getting the process from beginning to end is a better approach. And yeah, I think I can see this episode ending when Gojo gets trapped and says, I have faith in everyone. Episode 10 will cover chapters 92, 93, and 94. This is basically when Yuji learns that Gojo has been sealed and he tells Nanami's group about it and finds them. And uh, later, Yuji, Megumi, and Ino team up and f have a fight between the Ogami family, which continues on to episode 11, which I think will cover chapters 95, 96, and 97. And again, it continues the Ogami family fight and it ends with Yuji and Megumi defeating Mr. Awasaka and Toji defeating Ino. Episode 12 will cover chapters 98, 99, and 100. So the curtain or veil around Shibuya has lifted. Um, Ino got seriously injured from Toji. Meimei just defeated a curse and Nanami beats the crap out of Haruta, saving Nobara and Arata Nita, I think that's her name. Episode 13 will cover chapters 101 and 102. This is when Meimei comes into contact with Kenjaku and fights the smallpox deity curse. Yuji also runs into Choso as they battle for a bit, but it continues later as this episode is all about Meimei and her brother, Wee oui, Wee. Oui. Episode 14 will cover chapters 104, 105, and 106. This one focuses on the fight with Choso as they go into the bathroom and have this sweet hand-to-hand -hand close quarter combat fight. I mean, the setting was perfect with the water sprinklers going off and, you know, it's one of my favorite fights in the series and I can't wait for it to be animated. But uh, anyways, majority of it is all action so I can see this episode ending with Nabito's group meeting Dagon or Dagon. I used to say Dagon, but it's spelled D-A-G-O-N, so I think it's Dagon, but anyways, episode 15 will cover chapters 107, 108, and 109. These three chapters are basically the group fighting Dagon, I'm just gonna say Dagon, and uh, yeah, he activates his domain expansion, and pretty much this whole fight is just a cluster F of action. Uh, later, Megami comes in to help, uh, and that's when the cliffhanger comes in as Toji suddenly appears. Episode 16 will cover chapters 110, 111, and 112. This is when Toji goes crazy and defeats Dagon, which also brings everyone out of the domain. Unfortunately for them, Jogo was right where they spawned back, and he burns up Maki, Nanami, and Nabito. We later see Yuji getting fed 10 fingers, which forcefully puts Sukuna in control, and ends with Jogo and Sukuna beginning their fight. Before the fight actually happens, we go on to episode 17, which covers chapters 113 and 114. This basically shows the fight between Megumi and his father Toji, who spawned somewhere else. We also get a look at the original Ghetto's group as they're about to fight Panda and Kusakabe. That's until they hear a loud explosion behind them, and that's the fight between Sukuna and Jogo. Episode 18 continues the fight, and it covers chapters 115, 116, and 117. Um, and yeah, again, it finishes up the fight between Sukuna and Jogo. I mean, it was more of a one-sided fight, but yeah, Megumi spawns the Maharaga, which I can see the episode ending to where Sukuna and the Maharaga face off. And then episode 19 will cover chapters 118, 119, and 120. If my estimates stay true, then episode 19 will be a heavy depressing episode because it will start with the Sukuna vs. Maharaga fight, pretty sick. Uh, then Sukuna will open his domain expansion, killing thousands of people in Shibuya and creating collateral damage, later killing Haruta as well. Then Yuji will transform back and take control, but will start to cry and break down mentally as he realizes the destruction is all because of him, or well, the demon inside him at least. This episode will end at chapter 120, where Nanami dies in the hands of Mahito as Yuji screams in anger. I think this would be a perfect depressing way to end an episode. Episode 20 will cover chapters 121, 122, and 123. This is when Yuji fights Mahito and Nobara fights his double, and the fight is pretty long, so it continues on to the next episode, episode 21, which covers chapters 124, 125, and 126. This this is when Mahito quote unquote kills Nobara as then we get her backstory uh, and then Yuji just breaks and rages at Mahito but unfortunately gets defeated and when Mahito is about to kill Yuji once and for all the episode actually ends with Toto saving our boy saying wake up brother our battle has just begun. 
I think that's a pretty cool way to end the episode and head on to the next one. Episode 22 will cover chapters 127, 128, 129, and 130. Four chapters of action as it's just the fight between Yuji and Toto uh, against Mahito. And again, they can probably do this in one episode because it's mostly just fighting, movements taking place, and less talking. I think the episode will end when Toto sacrifices his hand for Yuji as Mahito obtains the true essence of his soul, getting this new upgraded body. And uh, yeah, episode 23 will cover chapters 131, 132, 133, and 134. Another four chapters that I think can fit in one episode because the first two wraps up the fight between Yuji and Mahito. And you can see as I skim through these panels, they're just filled with action sequences, not too many words. And uh, I think the episode should end with everyone surrounding Noritoshi Kamo, or should I say Kenjaku. Episode 24 will cover chapters 135, 136, and 137. Chapter 135 has some action with everyone attacking Kenjaku, and then 136 is when Yuki comes in and saves everyone, uh, and then, you know, they start talking about their ideals, the use of cursed energy, and Kenjaku's plan. This would end the Shibuya incident arc as the final episode will end on chapter 137, where we see our boy Yuta Akatsu saying the lines, I will kill Yuji Itadori. I think that would be a perfect ending to the season, having a cliffhanger in the end with Yuta coming back and saying he's gonna kill Itadori. I mean, anime onlys who, again, like at the time the movie's already come out, so when they see Yuta, they think of him as this calm, relaxed guy from the prequel, so him saying the line of killing Yuji will be kind of like a nice way or twisting way to end the season. And yeah, I mean, in conclusion, if we are going to get a 24 episode season like we did in the first season, then I'm expecting 5 episodes of the Gojo Past arc and 19 episodes of the Shibuya Incident arc. Or, if we're getting a 26 episode season, then it should be 6 episodes of the Gojo Past arc and 20 episodes of the Shibuya Buya Incident Arc. That's my prediction for Season 2 of Jujutsu Kaisen. Again, when the actual season comes out, I'm sure I'll be like a couple episodes or a couple chapters wrong. Let me know in the comments if you believe we could see both arcs in one season because there's actually a lot of doubt that we're not going to see both arcs in this season because it's too much content. And I mean, it's a little bit worrisome because it is a total of 73 chapters. That's 10 more chapters than the first season, although you gotta think again, it's, you know, a ton of fights, so I think they can pull it off. I think we can see both the Gojo Past arc and the Shibuya Incident arc in, you know, season 2. And speaking about season 2, I think we could see it release on winter 2022 or spring 2023. I mean, I wouldn't mind winter 2023 either because this season is just a chaotic one, and I'm sure MAPPA knows the high expectations from fans, and so I hope the production team gives them time. I mean, I'm pretty sure the work around Jujutsu Kaisen has been pretty good like there hasn't been any complaints or you know anything about being rushed or anything back when the first season was airing i heard that a lot of freelancers and you know animators from other studios pitched in to help so i think they're flexible with this project i think they're flexible with you know jujutsu kaisen i don't think there's going to be any negative news about the workplace or conditions but then again you know you never really know how the anime industry works so yeah i hope for the best i actually can't wait to see this video years later and see how much i got wrong and how much i got right you know, hopefully you'll be there as well in years time. But uh, yeah, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. It's been the fake weeb. And I'm out. Peace.